Hello and welcome to a character video, I guess. Uh, this is a kind of video I've been meaning to do for a while. I build a lot of characters, mostly for Adventurers League playing. So these characters might not be as optimal as they can be because I'm limited in my race and skill selection to conform to AL validity. But you can be sure you can take these characters to the League and they will be legal. I'm going to start with my second character I built for the League which I'm going to show you here. Uh, the first one I built was a full open hand monk because I like monks and this is what I call the heavy bard. It started with me wanting to build a bard that can fight and that would be metal because uh, a metal bard is cool. This was before Xenathars came out so my obvious choice was College of Valor but I don't think it's up to snuff. It's not very bardy, it's not very fightery and ends up being very mediocre. So I build it like this. Do note that uh, the character I built and played is currently level 8, but this is a plan all the way up to level 20. Uh, okay, we start with race selection. I'm gonna go with human because I want a feat. So, human variant. Uh, yes. I'm going to go with uh, strength and, the, and charisma. I'll show you in a minute why. Actually, because he's based on strength and charisma. Uh, languages, there's just any language you want, uh, doesn't really matter, pick something. Uh, skills, I prefer to go with insight. I usually choose my, uh, I'll show you how to do this, but I usually leave my skill choice in this because it's more broad to the end. Feet I need is sentinel. Where is Sentinel? Sentinel. Because uh, this is a bard who wants to move forward and keep people locked in. Next thing I do is I go with abilities. Of course, you have to go with point by or standard array for the league. So we go with 15 strength, 8 dexterity because we're going to go heavy, 14 con, as much hit points as we can get. No need for intelligence, is not very intelligent. A bit of wisdom and 15 in Charisma. And so we get 16, and 16 in our most important attributes, and 14 Con, which is nice. Second, background. I choose to go with Soldier, because Soldier gives Athletic and Intimidation, which is great for uh, a Metal Bard. And just pick any game set you want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, For, uh, for race abilities, for class abilities, class, I start with Paladin, because then we get proficiency with all armor, all shields, simple weapons, martial weapons, we get a good uh, starting uh, hit points, uh, good physical and uh, uh, social skills, divine sense, lay on hands, which is very nice for healing. Uh, so. Start with a bow, with a paladin. Proficiencies, I go with uh, uh, what did I go with? Um, persuasion and insight. And then with my race, I can choose whatever I want, so it can be anything. Uh, You can go with the uh, intimidation I already have, deception, if you want to lie to people. <clears throat> um, you also, also went with animal handling, because this is because you don't lie. Uh, okay, class. This is how we start. Uh, you get the standard equipment for, uh, for a paladin, which is you want a martial weapon and a shield, preferably a long sword, sword and bow bard, five javelins you can attack in range, explorer pack is much better than a priest pack, and anything will do for, uh, for a holy symbol. Then <coughs> a dagger is at least somewhat useful, 
some dice for your proficiency with dice games, common clothes and a pouch. And you get all of that. Don't forget to wield your stuff. And you can see our starting bard, starting heavy bard, already armor 18, long sword as best as it can be at first level, and all of that. <clears throat> Back to building. Second level, bard. Second level bard because we get lots of more lots more proficiencies and spellcasting. Full spellcasting. And also about inspiration to help your friends. So uh, musical instrument, basically I dubbed this as an electric guitar, but uh, it's just skinning and we go with performance because he's a bard. Uh, spellcasting. First with spellcasting I prefer to go more friendly. Uh, so I go with friends and also a bit of damage with Vicious Mockery. Then for helping in combat I use Fairy Fire and Healing Ward to help your friends from range because they're probably not going to be as close to you. Tasha's Hideous Laughter to, to disable opponents and Thunder Wave just to do some area of effect damage. That's the Bard. Second, third level, Bard level 2. You get Jack of All Trades. Don't forget your Bardic Inspiration. You get Jack of All Trades, which has your proficiency, half proficiency to anything you are not already proficient in, which is awesome. And you get Song of Rest, which has 1d6 every time you long rest and roll hit dice. Look at the, at the full page right now. You can see all the skills. Athletics very high, Intimidation very high performance persuasion, but also all the rest are kind of okay, which is nice. Level 4, go with bard level 3, because uh, paladin at level 1 is still very efficient. Go with bard college, bard college of valor, because they get the most spell power. Uh, <clears throat> no, not college of valor, college of law, excuse me. You get bonus proficiencies which I'm going to go with um, Arcana uh, and Perception and you can go anything for your third like Deception if you want to trick people, if you want to go Stealth to not completely uh, ruin Stealth rolls even though you're a Paladin you also get Cutting Ward which helps you re reduce damage uh, or reduce uh, ability checks and you get expertise. This is the fun part. We go with persuasion because then you're the face who can talk anyone to do anything and you go with athletics which means you can push people around and knock people prone and this is so much fun because at level 4 your athletics is 7 which is like a high level barbarian. <clears throat> level 5, finally go with paladin level 2, which gets, first of all, we get a fighting style, which I choose defensive, bumps up your, your IC. You also get divine smite, uh, the best damage for the paladin, extra damage, and spellcasting. Paladins do not get cantrips, but they get full selection as a divine caster. So my preferred is compel duel, go, go to the bad guy and say you're only fighting me and then you're a huge tank. Uh, detect magic, your wizard or sorcerer should have this but it's also good if you, if you, if you have it covered then use detect evil and good. Uh, also very important shield of faith to boost that AC and wrathful smite because it's keeps people frightened and, and disadvantage. Very good for your friends. Um, look at it now. You can see that at level 5 my AC is 19 and I can boost it to 21 with, uh, with Shield of Faith. At level 6 we go with Paladin level 3 which gives us the Oath. 
My preferred for this is the Oath of Devotion. Uh, don't forget here, you also get Divine Health. Divine Health, which gives you immunity to disease. Nice, not that useful, useful unless you're old school dungeon delving. Uh, with Oath of Devotion you get Sacred Weapon, which turns your weapon uh, into a magic weapon, which you're probably going to need because you haven't taken any ASI yet. And you get some kind of a uh, turn undead <coughs> and fiends, which is also kind of useful. Uh, your expanded list also now includes uh, protection from evil and good, very good against fiends, elementals, stuff like that, and sanctuary, which you can probably want to cast on your buffer, whoever that is. <coughs> with level 4, you go with level 4 paladin. Uh, at, at this range, it doesn't really matter uh, which way you go in, unless you want to go first for strength or then for charisma. Uh, I choose to go with strength because you almost you go with charisma because uh, the purpose of the heavy bard is mostly to tank and buff. <clears throat> so I want spellcasting ability up to wazoo. Uh, then you can add more spells because you boosted charisma and you up to your. Uh, level for counting total spells and uh, I prefer to go with Bless which you can use to also buff your friends <clears throat> and Thunderous Smite which is another kind of useful smite which makes a lot of thunder damage and knocks people prone also useful for your friends <clears throat> level 8 is, le is bar level 4 <coughs> With Bard level 4, you also get an ASI, which we also assign to Charisma. Now you're a spellcasting monster. As your Charisma in now is now 20. Uh, at this stage, there are several adventures you can do to get uh, Gauntlets of Ogre Power, which will boost your strength to something more useful. Uh, but if not, We'll take care of that later. Uh, with bard level 4 you also get another cantrip, which I decided to go with Minor Illusion, very useful utility spell, you can use it to trick people, and with your persuasion and uh, for deception you can really make it work. Um, also for level spells, Detect Thoughts, very useful for interrogation, getting information out of, out of people, and cure wounds. Did I forget something? Uh, heat metal, also very useful. Uh, no, heat metal, I think I forgot some spell. Uh, yeah, heat metal is very useful because it's a bonus action. So you can still do it, even though you're attacking. Uh, that's that covered. Level 9 is level 5 of Paladin, which grants you extra attack. Extra attack means you attack twice, and with spells you get to select a new spell, which I went with a Branding Smite. Smites, always good. Uh, your magic weapon is usually unnecessary by now, you should have a magic weapon by now. And uh, the rest is less useful and as, as, a, as, a, as a paladin you can reset every day. So this is just my preferred list. Uh, fine Steed you should just cast as needed, you don't really need to hold it prepared. Branding Smite is, deals radiant damage and makes people visible. Which uh, if you have an visible kind of en enemy, this is useful. Uh, level 10, finally, Paladin level 6, grants us Auras. Aura uh, protection means you add Charisma modifier to all saves for you and every creature within 10 feet. Uh, and you can pick another spell as you gained uh, an even level. I chose to go with Locate Object. When you're investigating, we need to find things useful. Now, with Aura 
and uh, plus 5 charisma, you're pretty much good for saves. And your, uh, your proficiency bonus will increase two more times to boost this. This is insane. Uh, with level 11, level 11, you go with bard level 5. Bard level 5 grants you more spells. First of all, font of inspiration, which means you get your uh, bard inspiration on a long rest and a short rest. Very good. And you can choose more spells. Basically another one. Uh, so I decided to uh, I decided to dump a low level spell. Uh, you can dump any low level spell um, Like cure wounds because uh, you're not going to do it a lot. You're not going to be the major healer, and uh, the deck bestow curse because it's nasty, and dispel magic because you can't counter spell yet. For some reason there is no counter spell, uh, but. Uh, no, you can't count the spell because it's not a it's not a bad spell, but you can dispel magic. And bestow curse is very very use, very useful for creative people. Uh, with that, we go with level twelve is bard level six. Bard level six basically you don't need a paladin beyond six level. The benefits get very redundant for this use, but with bard level six, you get additional magical secrets which I chose to go with uh, something that is useful for a fighter, which means shield, shield, which can boost your AC tremendously if you need it, and you have uh, the full casting capabilities of the bard, and uh, flame blade or shadow blade are, are both very good. Flame blade, for example, flame blade, Uh, gives you 3d6 on a hit. Uh, it replaces your blade, but it, uh, it's 3d6 fire damage and it emits light, which is nice if you can't see in the dark. Uh, shadow blade, sh shadow blade is similar, also useful. It's uh, 2d8 psychic damage, you can throw it, and it's your roll with advantage if you're in dim light or darkness. Whichever works for you, they're both good. Uh, level 7 of Bard will give us... Uh, first of all, yeah, in 6 you also get the counter charm, which allows you to counter Effects that give, uh, give advantage and effects that give you frightened or charmed. Very nice. Uh, seven gives you another spellcasting level. So, it should give you another spellcasting level. Yes. So, don't be stalker, so whatever you don't feel like using at the moment. No, wait, I don't need to. Uh, Stalkers, we add greater invisibility and polymorph. Very versatile, very useful almost every time. Uh, greater invisibility gives you advantage when you hit and st stays up, and polymorph allows you to mi uh, miniaturize the big creatures or turn your friends into monsters. Uh, level 8 of Bard gives you another ASI. Which, because I'm playing a paladin, I decided to go with a feat. Because I'm playing a mounted heavy bard, we go with mounted combatant. Which gives you a lot of bonuses if you're riding a horse, which you should. 
uh, with spells. I decided to go with freedom of movement. If you anticipate trouble, this is extremely useful and uh, also extremely useful if you target your horse or target yourself and your horse at the same time uh, because you have a steed. And Bard level 9 gives you another spell slot which we chose to go with Synaptic Static. Bard level 9 should give you another spell level, which is weird that Dindy Beyond does that. But I chose to go with Synaptic Static because it's extremely powerful, very damaging, and uh, it's basically a very improved uh, Bane, if you hit it correctly. And it's an in-save, which isn't very doesn't come up very often. Bard level 10. <coughs> Grants us another expertise. With expertise in intimidation and performance, you, uh, you can. Performance is a personal choice. I like a performing bard because it's supposed to be a metal bard. You can go with stealth to even, or perception to boost uh, essential skills. I chose performance. With magical secrets, you can now do something you couldn't because you didn't take high levels of paladin you can go with Find Greater Steed, which allows you to call on uh, Sabertooth Tigers, Rhinoceros, Periton, Pegasus, which is my favorite. And with Find Greater Steed, also Bigby's Hand, which uh, Sam Regal popularized with Scanlan. It's an extremely useful spell, very versatile, also useful in combat. Uh, for spells, you can now select another uh, cantrip. Doesn't really matter, you have a lot of cantrips, just pick anything, mending, message, mage hand, whatever. And you also get access to uh, one to fifth level spells, which useful are mask your wounds and um, and Dimension Door for moving around, or even Hold Monster. Uh, so, by this time, uh, it doesn't really matter, you can change them whenever you want, so let's remove the spell, let's remove uh, Thunder Wave. and go with Hold Monster and Mask Your Wounds, which gives you a very good healing ability all around. Very useful. Uh, with Bard level 11, you should be able to access six level spells. You don't get any more <coughs> any interesting features at this level because you gain a spell level. Uh, yeah, look at the DC on that one. With a 6th level spell, I chose to go with to Seeing. When you can see anything in darkness, by magic, uh, it doesn't even really matter that you're a human anymore. Um, with about level 12, we get another ASI which you can put into Strength or Con or whatever is appropriate at the moment. And level 13, you get more spells. And for the seventh level spell, I just to go with more than kind and sword because it's a lot of damage. It's force, and uh, it's basically a, a kind of spiritual weapon, only more powerful. Except it's concentration. Uh, but 
you can choose and refuse whatever you want. Uh, no, this is bar spells, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, at this level I haven't reached yet, so you can choose whatever fits the campaign. Or whatever you're playing. At 14th level, you get access to more magical secrets. My preferred for this is Destructive Wave, which is a very, very effective area of effect spell. 10d6 of various damage and knocking people prone. Very useful for a heavy bard. And finally, Crown of Stars. Crown of Stars. Which is an incredible damage spell that you can just hold. And finally, you get a bit more spells. Uh, again, you can choose whatever you want. Get restoration, force cage. Also, I love, I love it. And animate objects, very, very useful. Uh, okay, let's look at our creation. Now, that's a 20th level, Paladin 6, Bard 14, Heavy Bard, 150 hit points, uh, 19 AC, if you kept the original armor, which you should have gotten a plate or gotten a magical plate by now. Uh, um, uh, my guy has armor to rival Tiamat by now. Uh, note that uh, Jack of all trades also affects initiative, so you have a plus 3, which puts your initiative. Look at those saves. Skills are insane across the board, especially the useful ones like Persuasion and uh, Athletics. You can pretty much knock anyone away and push them around. And 20 Charisma, 18 Strength. A, list, a, lot of list, a lot of useful spells, which you have full casting capacity because you're a bard. Although you have no 8th and 9th level spells, only upcasting. Uh, but still, spell attack is very high, modifier is very high. Um, at this uh, level, you should get uh, uh, magical armor, maybe even a magical axe. Uh, I switched the axe because it's a heavy, heavy bard, you place an axe. And I think that's about it. That's the heavy bard. As far as I can see it. I uh, hope you liked the video and if you do I'll, maybe I'll make some more of, it, more of them. Thank you for watching.